breath. So at the University of Kent, uh, we have a respiratory clinic. Um, the respiratory clinic um, offers um, support for athletes that report um, breathing problems. And sometimes those breathing problems either stop them performing at their highest level, stop them completing high intensity training sessions. Um, and obviously that's not a particularly great place for an elite athlete to be if they can't breathe when they're trying to do their sport. Uh, we've supported um, athletes preparing for Olympic Games um, and we are continuing to support athletes uh, compete, uh, getting ready for the Tokyo Olympic Games. Um, we've supported um, Premier League football teams, uh, teams from the um, Premier League rugby. We supported elite level um, tennis players um, and we've also supported the England football team prior to the last World Cup. Um, so we, we, as much as we do research within within the university into respiratory problems of athletes, we also take that research and we and we um, deliver it on a consultancy basis directly with, with elite athletes. So, what you might think, well, an athlete, an elite athlete, shouldn't be experiencing respiratory um, exercise symptoms. That they should be the fittest people we know, but. Respiratory symptoms are the most common type of symptoms reported by elite athletes. And the types of symptoms they might, might report are things like wheezing, coughing, tight chest, difficulty in breathing. And if you maybe sort of put those symptoms to somebody um, on the street, you might say, well, what, what, what disease would, would, give, would, would you say would be associated with wheezing, coughing, tight chest and difficulty in breathing? And a large number of people might say, well, that, that sounds like it's an asthmatic problem. But what we know about these symptoms are that they're, they're non-specific. So what that means is that even though an individual might be coughing or, or wheezing, that doesn't necessarily mean they have asthma. There are um, ma many, many issues and diseases that, that cause these symptoms. So to simply label somebody that when they're exercising, they're experiencing a, you know, a wheeze or a cough. Um, so that must mean they've got asthma is is um, quite a lazy sort of statement. Um, and we know from research that, that we've conducted and, and others have conducted around, around the world, that if we use symptoms alone to diagnose asthma uh, in athletes, we, we get it wrong 50% of the time. And so the, the, the phrase we sort of use, that if we use symptoms alone to diagnose uh, asthma in athletes, we may as well flip a coin uh, to decide whether the individual has asthma or not. So what, what could be the other causes of, of the respiratory symptoms? They, uh, they, they, this isn't limited to this, but these are the, some of the main causes. It could be a cardiovascular disorder. It could be a physical limitation. Um, I mean, it could be the athletes returning from injury uh, and they're just still trying to get their fitness up. Um, or it could be, if you think about in a recreational world, maybe someone who's um, coming from a sedentary point of view, trying to get in, in, into a fitter state. Uh, it might be to do with, with the weight that they're carrying. Um, the symptoms could be because of asthma or a exercise specific form of asthma called exercise induced bronchoconstriction, or the symptoms could be caused by a dysfunctional uh, breathing, uh, which could be an inappropriate breathing pattern, could be to do with the upper, upper airway obstruction in the, in the larynx, uh, or it could be some form of anxiety or hyperventilation syndrome. Um, so these are sort of the considerations that if an athlete w was to present to, to myself at our respiratory clinic that I I'd need to, to sort of think through. Um, I'm very lucky that within the sport medicine world, cardiovascular disorders are, are generally well cared for. And so a lot of the time when athletes do report these sorts of symptoms, they are usually screened relatively quickly for cardiovascular disorders. And um, they're either... Um, ruled out or ruled in relatively straight relatively quickly so usually by the time we, we see an athlete the cardiovascular disorder has either been picked up or or has been dismissed um and then we think about physical limitation usually with well-trained athletes the physical limitation isn't usually so much of a consideration so really what we're focusing on really is these last two the asthma and, and the dysfunctional breathing maybe we know more about the asthma and the exercise induced bronchoconstriction and, and less about the dysfunctional breathing. And that's where some of the work we're doing at the university is trying to help us understand what dysfunctional breathing actually is and how we might support athletes um, going forwards with that. So a lot of our work um, is really crucial because we see these sort of things all the time when maybe athletes 
um, get caught, caught up in whether using asthma, asthma therapy is, is a form of cheating. And you, you may be aware of uh, people like Bradley Wiggins or, or Chris Froome um, who have been dragged through the press for their, for their use of, of uh, asthma th uh, therapy to, to, to support their asthma. Um, and you know, when we were screening the England football team, the, the press got hold of it and, and was suggesting that, that because we were screening the team to make sure that their asthma, their, their airway health was being well controlled and we hadn't missed anybody who might have asthma in the team, um, that that may be um, a form of trying to get a performance boost out of the players. Whereas actually, in reality, all it, all it, all it is and all it, all it was was providing best care for the athletes, providing, making sure that their, their respiratory health what was was being well looked after prior to going to compete in a, at, a, at a high high um, high level event like the World Cup, and so a lot of our, a lot of our work, a lot of our research helps to bring a bit of uh, um, sort of sensible thought to to how we might manage asthma in athletes. But also, we need to make athletes feel comfortable that actually having asthma is isn't going to be a detriment to their performance because we can control it. And also, using inhalers shouldn't be seen as cheating. Uh, as long as they're used within the within the doses that are prescribed, and we need that education to come through because these headlines obviously aren't particularly helpful um, in terms of ensuring athletes maybe who do have asthma um, will use their inhalers. We don't want them to to, to not use their inhalers because then they obviously risk risk their health. And so a lot of the work I'm going to talk through now is basically just how we might go through that process of um, supporting athletes, managing any any airway problems that they have uh, appropriately. Um, and talking through how we how we might work through uh, working with dysfunctional breathing that might be uh, not so well understood. So one of the reasons why um, uh, asthma is is a is an issue within within athletes is because when we look at the data that some of some of the early work that I did in this um, area um, uh, discovered was that elite GB um, athletes that go to the Olympic Games ha ha the prevalence in their in their teams twenty one percent. Of people of elite athletes have, have an asthmatic condition, whereas nine percent of the UK population have an asthmatic-related uh, condition. So therefore, elite athletes are more likely to experience an asthma-related condition than somebody who isn't an elite athlete. And so we need to start thinking about well, why is that? Is that because they are pushing their bodies to the limits and therefore breathing more air, so they're more exposed to, to asthmogenic triggers? Is it because they're, they're, they're working hard and so therefore they're more likely to report respiratory symptoms and so therefore the doctor might, um, might present to their doctor? We need to understand what, what, why, why that is. And first of all, we need to understand what, what asthma is essentially and sometimes this is misunderstood because sometimes people think if you can't breathe, that, that's aspirin, that isn't always the case. So when we think about asthma, we've got to think about it's a sort of an, air, an airway issue that really impacts the what we call collapsible airways. So these are the airways in the in the lung that aren't lined with cartilage, and, and they're basically the, the caliber of the airway is maintained by by smooth muscles surrounding the airway. And you see in this uh, bronchiole of an individual who hasn't got asthma that the air the, the smooth muscle around the airway is nice and relaxed. The, the lining of the airway walls are relatively uninflamed, and so therefore the uh, gap that the air can pass through is is, is relatively open. And if we compare that to someone who's experiencing an asthma attack, you can see that they've got a swell, uh, swelling of the air, airway wall. So they've got an inflamed airway wall and that in inflammation has caused the smooth muscle to constrict around the airway as well. And that inflammation with the smooth muscle constriction essentially narrows, narrows the gap the air can pass through. So the resistance is higher. So therefore, when an individual with asthma tries to breathe out, it's much harder for them to breathe out at the same flow rate that they could do when they weren't experiencing an asthma response. And essentially when we take asthma therapy, so we think of things like in, um, blue and brown inhalers, they act to open up the airway. So a, a blue inhaler, so salbutamol, when you inhale it into the lower airway, essentially relaxes this smooth muscle and, and allows the airway to, to open up again. And the brown inhalers are their inhaled corticosteroids. steroids. They act as an anti-inflammatory an, an anti um, therapy and so therefore reduce or and 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 inhibit the the production inflammatory market the inflammatory mediators that cause the airway wall to, to, to inflame so by combination of prevention therapy with inhaled corticosteroids and uh and and uh, medication like inhaled salbutamol an asthmatic 
individual can control their asthma to a point where their airways look as if they're, they're non-asthmatic. And so therefore we can get asthmatics well controlled and they can effectively compete on a level playing field with their non-asthmatic counterparts whilst also maintaining the airway health. And that's basically what the goal is when, when we're trying to support athletes who have asthma competing, um, uh, competing, competing at elite level.